Penis fencing and poop flinging are the easier real-world challenges these animals have to brave. We present the five weirdest mating rituals in the animal world. And these hapless creatures have no option to swipe left. Number five, giraffes. We're starting the list with an unusual suspect, the giraffe. Like a lot of weirdos, these seemingly peaceful, law-abiding citizens of the wild have a disturbing kink in their mating preferences. When he's not struggling to meet his daily quota of munching 34 kilograms of tree branches each day, a male giraffe likes to rub itself against a female's back. He does this to invite the female to lift her tail and urinate straight into his mouth. Like a box of fried wine. Then he has to face competitors. The rivals entwine their 2.1 meter necks and butt heads until one backs off. It's called necking. I think we have very different ideas of what necking is. Number four, anglerfish. If you were unfortunate enough to be a certain type of deep sea dwelling male anglerfish, you'd be out of luck from the moment you are born. Not only would you have to live with this face, you'd be significantly smaller than the females. Unlike her, you wouldn't carry a cool light rod and couldn't hunt for yourself. The last and most important thing you would do in your life is to bite into the flesh of the future mother of your children. And that is the beginning of the end for a male anglerfish. Straight after biting into the massive female, the male's mouth, eyes, and some inside organs start melting, and his body fuses with the female's. Look what you've done! I'm melting! Melting! Eventually, the male anglerfish becomes a sperm reserve growing out of the female's body. A female can have multiple males living on her body. She supplies them with food in return for a steady supply of sperm. The female anglerfish lures the male with the hypnotic light of her bioluminescent rod or elysium and the smell of her pheromones. Get it, girl. Number three, Persian carpet worm. With great power comes great responsibility, and no creature knows that better than the Persian carpet flatworm. To avoid bearing and birthing their young, flatworms fight a violent hour-long battle, and this battle is graphic. Persian carpet flatworms are hermaphrodites, meaning they all have male and female organs. And in case you're wondering, they are not called Persian carpet worms because they live exclusively in Persian carpets although that would be cool. Their body markings and shape just happen to resemble a Persian carpet. When a spray of pheromones indicates it's time to find a mate, each critter brandishes its two penises and they fight. The aim is to stab and inseminate your opponent and avoid getting stabbed yourself. Any skin wound will do, as the sperm travel to the ovaries once they enter a flatworm's skin. Look, just a flesh wound. Pregnancy comes with a very high cost, as it takes so much energy, and healing from additional stab wounds takes a long time. This is an important consideration for the dainty Persian carpet flatworms. They're so sensitive to stress that their digestive juices can dissolve and kill them. Number two, hippopotamus. There is nothing soft and cuddly about this angry, vicious, wild animal. The hippopotamus is the second deadliest animal after the two-legged killing machine, Homo sapiens. But hippos have a terrifying mating ritual. Within a year, a single male hippo usually mates with multiple females. And he is far from a gentleman suitor. Once he sniffs a female in heat, the male pees and defecates at the same time for the next three days. This is supposed to lure the female and repel any rivals, and he uses his tail to whip up a stinky storm of poo and pee. When he succeeds in separating his chosen female from the herd, the male hippo leads her into deeper water. Despite her violent protests, the male dunks the female's head underwater and mounts her. He violently suppresses the female's attempts to come up for air, after he succeeds in mating, he lets out a triumphant wheeze. Oh, yeah. Yep, take a minute to recover from that. I think we all need a breather. And number one, praying mantis. At the top of our list is a tiny bug. 
but every male praying mantis puts its head on the line every time it decides to mate. About one third of all mating sessions end with the female biting the male's head off while she continues mating with its headless body. The males try to keep their heads by going for the more docile and well-fed females. But with their famous appetite, sometimes it's hard to pass an opportunity for an easy, captive meal. Chewing up her partner's head gives her an added advantage. It allows the female mantis access to more sperm, as the male's brains have receptors that inhibit copulation. Neurons in the abdomen control the copulation movements, and this ruthless female knows what's good for the future of her species. Losing their heads and bodies in the name of love and fencing with their penises is what they do. And that's why they're crazy creatures.